What's going on, guys? This is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Welcome back to another amazing video. So if your solo game is struggling this season, you're not alone. Trust me, okay? Even some of the best players are struggling to adapt to this strange meta that we've got with this new season, okay? So if you're struggling with solos at all, then this video is perfect for you guys because we're gonna be going over everything that you need to know to dominate every single solo match you enter. And by the end of this video, you're gonna know everything that you need to know consistently about how to place high in cash cups, you know, the solo FNCS and any other solo tournaments that come around. But before we get into this, okay, I've got the question of the day. All right, what play style do you usually play in solo competitive? Personally, you know, my mechanics have been improving more and more lately, so I've been trying to play much more aggressive and, you know, it's really been working out for me. So let me know down in the comments, you know, what you guys do and really interested to find out. All right, guys, Bunch of Crunch Army, it's about that time. Say it with me. It's time to sit back, come on, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. Which one is it? Which one is it? Which one is it? It's that, oh, one hand. Bunch of Crunch, and let's get this going. So before we start, if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe for more videos just like this one. All right, guys, let's go. So this video is going to have four sections, including looting, fighting, loadouts, and rotation, starting off with looting. Here we go. So obviously the map has undergone some pretty interesting changes going into this new season. Personally, I really enjoy the changes, I, I do, but some competitive players are finding it super tough to find that one drop spot that just really works well for them. Especially if theirs was destroyed in the flood, like mine was, <laughs> because Midas was dumb and decided to destroy the map. Great, thank you Midas. So you think with all those darn delays, yes, I said darn, that is actually one of my favorite words, he'd have enough time to make a device that actually works. But uh, whatever, I digress. Looting is a lot more complicated this season because the loot pool now has a lot more stuff, which is cool. But once you can find a good drop spot and loot route, it's pretty easy. So a good drop spot has a lot of unique characteristics, which may include, listen up, obviously good loot, right? Good materials, um, rotation options, map position, and potentially mythic loot as well. So the first thing that you need to do in order to find that perfect drop spot is try out a bunch of different places, you know, based on your play style, all right? And narrow it down to a few that you like. From here, and I mean like right here, compare and contrast the different factors that make each spot good and make a decision on which spot you wanna use, okay? Finally, head into the battle lab and devise a loot route, which includes an exact spot to land and a route that you follow every single game to get your loot and materials. Speaking of loot wraps, okay, so if you're looking for some specific spots that might be worth trying out, check out our recent video on the top five landing spots for arena and cash cups, really good. Honestly, in terms of looting, the whole process is pretty easy. The hardest part is just really finding your spot, but I would recommend trying out a bunch of different spots and really considering each of them based on the factors that we talked about before and also just what you prefer, all right? Okay, so with that being said, once you find your perfect drop spot and loot route, another use factor is fighting other players to grab points and just make it to the end game. So we need to talk about that, here we go. So fighting hasn't changed too drastically from last season to this season. The loot pool is definitely different and locations have definitely changed due to the flood, but the overall mechanics and fighting really have stayed mostly the same. One thing our analysts noticed while watching Benji and Mongra in Arena is that they're almost always on the offensive in their fights. The thing about fighting in Fortnite is that a lot of it is a mental game. Basically, like if you can get inside your opponent's head and have them scared, then your chances of winning the fight go up crazy, all right? Even if you're technically not as mechanically skilled or good as fighting as they are, if you get into their head, man, you got it. So the key takeaway here is that you should always keep your situational awareness up, AKA keeping track of all your surroundings, all right? So that you can just sneak up on all your opponents, get that crucial damage before the fight, and possibly the most important part of it all, be the aggressor, man, and have the momentum going into the fight. That's one of the biggest things really to keep in mind when you're fighting other players. Also, since we're on the topic of Mongrel and Benji, I gotta throw this in, right? It's worth mentioning that both of these amazing players also have their own courses, yeah, here on ProGuys.com. On our website, man, we have tons of courses from Mongrel, Benji, and other pros, along with 24-7 on-demand coaching from some hand-picked pro players to help you guys out. And you know what? It's time for us to step up our game. So, if any of this interests you, be sure to check out ProGuys.com. 
But with that said, another major thing that most players mess up on during fights is that they constantly fail to apply pressure to their opponents as they push. Too many of us get damage off, right? We start pushing, but we allow our opponents time to heal. And when you're in a fight, time is constantly ticking and your opponent is able to heal up and reset, right? So we have to maintain pressure the entire time to avoid them healing, to avoid them reloading or really resetting mentally. So you can just keep tension high and stay in their head. Remember guys, like once again, Fortnite is a mental game above everything else. So the last major issue in fights that we see from many, you know, many players is taking 50 50s. I have to admit, I do that a lot. I, I know when you're like in the flow of the game, you see someone, it's like, oh, I can take this guy out. Easy kill, let's, let's keep it pushing. And the next thing you know, you know, you've been griefed. Like now, you know, even if you've won the battle, <laughs> now you're so low in health that the next person that comes up, it's a wrap. So, you know, you never want to take a 50-50 edit, all right? Basically, never make an edit or play that allows your opponent to easily just shoot at you, okay? For example, if your opponent is inside of a box and you take their wall and simply just edit a triangle while you're in the open <laughs> in front of them, then they're just going to blast you in the face and send you straight back to the good old lobby. Instead of just making an edit like this, you could do a Mongo Classic to just, you know, kind of mix them up a little bit. Or a peanut butter edit for that right-hand peak or anything else along those lines, right? Basically, never take an edit that gives your opponent an easy shot on you, man, because anybody good is gonna take advantage of your mistake and quite possibly end your game. All right, next up, we've got one of the most important parts of this new season, which is loadouts. Two of them, which are the biggest changes this season, came in the form of the brand new shotgun, AKA your favorite gun, the Charge Shotgun. Along with the addition of so many new mythic items like the Shockwave Launcher, Mythic Burst AR, Mythic Chug Jug, okay, and so much more. Speaking of mythic weapons, let me know down in the comments which mythic weapon is your favorite. I like the Shockwave Launcher simply because it's so easy to use and it's very versatile. If you plan on landing at a mythic location, you're obviously gonna have to be ready to fight, but it might be worth it, man. Like some of these mythic items are literally just insane and they're definitely worth carrying out, right? So consider building your loot route around them if they interest you. So one possible plan is to land outside of a mythic POI and rotate in after a few minutes to clean up the last player or two and really get that beautiful mythic loot and vault key card. So one example is landing at the weather station and rotating up to Caddy Corner, which is one of the hardest rotations to counter if you're in Caddy. So while we obviously don't recommend taking this exact route, it's a really good example of one that might work really well for you. So another thing to consider when it comes to loadouts is your preference of ARs. With the new changes to the burst, it's now much more accurate, deals much more damage, and really only fires twice instead of three times. Honestly, this has made me like the burst even more, and I pretty much pick up any epic, legendary, or even possibly mythic burst that I can find. I think your choice of AR should mostly depend on whether you're carrying an SMG or not. If you do have an SMG in your loadout, I recommend carrying a purple or gold burst over an equal rarity scar. My reason is that the burst is a super heavy hitter and definitely gets heavier and more consistent beams if you can really just hit your shots. But it's obviously not that great for box fighting, okay? If you don't have another weapon like an SMG to back up your shotgun fire. Finally, my friends, the hardest decision related to loadouts is whether you should pick the heavy damage yet confusing charged shotgun or the consistent but weaker hitting tactical shotgun. Ultimately, really this is up to preference, but personally, I like an equal rarity tactical a little better just because I know what to expect when I use it. Finally, the last topic we're going to cover in this video is rotations. Now, we strongly recommend guys picking up a drop spot that has decent rotation items like boats, helicopters, or zip lines, or anything along those lines, all right? So you could just rotate a bit faster in early game. But let's do a quick zone by zone rundown of the most optimal solo rotations. Who's ready? Here we go, let's go. One quick thing to keep in mind, my friends, is like, this really also depends on your play style, right? So these rotations are best for an FNCS type play style where you're going for end game instead of just trying to slay out. For the first zone, it's best to stay around the edge. The reason being is that most players would be moving into the zone and roaming around. So the middle of the zone will be much more congested. And even if people are around the edges, the edge of the zone is so large for the first zone that the odds of you running into anyone are pretty low. So you can just go a bit toward the center, but don't be too aggressive with it or else you might end up in a pretty, pretty tough spot. 
All right, so for this second zone, your best bet is to rotate somewhat towards the center, but not all the way in. This allows you to rotate less distance to the third zone, which will end up being a pretty congested rotation as well, while also not putting you in the center of everyone's crosshairs. All right, third zone is next up, here we go. It's important that you get somewhat close to the center here, Fourth zone pops up next, and chances are, you know, you're gonna have a very short rotation to it, or already be in it if you're towards the center third. Moving into the fourth zone, all you have to do is just set up on the edge here and take the gamble for the half and half zone. If half and half is far away, we recommend just getting somewhat ahead, but also having the option to stay back in case someone just pops a launch pad. But this way, if nobody pops a launch pad, you're all set to rotate on foot. And obviously, if you do have a launch pad, now is the best time to consider using it, along with later zones to possibly take height. Finally, guys, the six zone and on are pretty simple. Like all you gotta do is just stay ahead of the zone, play for impact frags, and try to take height whenever they're struggling and you have the material to do so. Every end game is different. I know, I get it. And the best way to get better at end game is by playing it. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, man, the guy who believes in you, the guy who is rooting for you. I want you to be successful, not only in this game, but also in life. Make sure to connect with me on my Insta at your motivation guy. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and spread the word, man. We got so much great stuff going down here on the Pro Guys Fortnite channel. We'll see you soon. Peace.